2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 8 to verse 17. This is what the Bible says. One day, Elisha went to Shunem, and a well-to-do woman was there who urged him to stay for a meal. So whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. He said to her, uh, she, said, she said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Let's make a small room on the roof and put in a bed and a table, a chair and a lamp for him. Then he can stay there whenever he comes to us. One day when Elisha came, he went up to his room and lay down there. He said to his servant Gehazi, Call the Shunammite. So he called her, and she stood before him. Elisha said to, to him, Tell her, you have gone to all this trouble for us. Now what can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or uh, the commander of the army? She replied, I have a home among my own people. Then verse 14, what can be done for her? Elisha asked. Gehazi said, she has no son, and her husband is old. Then Elisha said, call, um, let me, then Elisha said, call her. So he called her, and she stood in the doorway. Then verse 16, about this time next year, I want to repeat this one, about this time next year, Elisha said, you will hold a son in your arms. No, my Lord, she objected. Please, man of God, don't mi mislead your servant. Then finally, verse 17, but the woman became pregnant, and the next year, about the same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elisha had told her. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for this word you have given us this last Sunday of the year 2021, and I pray that you speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We may have our seats. The word that God has given me for this Sunday is commanding your year, commanding your year. We have a few days before the year 2021 expires, and then we enter the year 2022. We are, as it were, at the gate of time, and a door is about to open for us to go into the year 2022. And I would like for us to prepare ourselves as we go through this door and prepare ourselves in such a way that we can really uh, maximize on the year 2022, commanding your year. May I say right away that everyone listening to me will enter 2022. I don't know that you've missed that. I'm saying everyone listening to me will enter year 2022. And therefore, I would like for us to learn how to command the whole stretch of the year. We've just finished Christmas, a time, family time. I know we all gathered in our families. We bonded together. You know, there were gifts exchanged. Sometimes they call today a day of opening those gifts. And I know if you never got a physical gift, our Lord Jesus Christ sent a gift in your direction in terms of joy and peace and favor gifts that no man can ever give. As we focus on the new year, there are three things I would like to share with us on commanding your year. Command with authority, command with specificity, command with expectation. Let me just repeat so that really it comes across again. Command with authority, command with specificity, command with expectation commanding your year. The key verse is verse 16. I'll just read it from 2 Kings chapter 4, uh, verse 16 and verse 17. And uh, this is the key verse. About this time next year, Elisha is speaking. And I want you to hear in this verse I'm just reading, those three things, authority, specificity, and expectation. In these two key verses, about this time next year, Elijah said, you will hold a son in your arms. No, my Lord, she objected. Please, man of God, don't mislead your servant. 
you know, she felt like her hopes were being raised. Maybe they were raised before, and that never happened in this area of her life. He said, don't mislead me. But then verse 17 says, but the woman became pregnant, and the next year, about the same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elisha had told her. That statement, that declaration, this decree by the servant of God carries authority, carries specificity, and carries also expectation. And today, I want us to learn how to command our year. Any one of us can do it. The young people who are here, the children who are here, I see some of our children here. This is something we can all do. What Elisha did many years ago in Shunem, in the home of the Shunammite woman, it is something we can do as we address the year 2022, this coming year. And uh, we, we can begin to command our year. It is possible to do it. First of all, command with authority. Command your ear with authority. We need to enter the space once more, the space of dominion as children of God, where we can begin to command with authority. When I think uh, about the word authority, it carries three things inside it. Authority carries the permission, it carries power, and it also carries right, the right to do something. Three things in authority. Permission to do something, power to be able to do that thing, and also the right to do it. So if somebody has authority, then they are working with those three things, permission, power, and right. And I would want to remind every child of God that you have authority. Oftentimes, we don't use it, but there is authority that God has given every child of God. Elisha was exercising his mandate, but every child of God in your family, in that neighborhood, God has given you a mandate. He's given you permission. He's given you power. He's given you a right. Every child of God walks with authority, but oftentimes we don't use it. We have a few days before the year 2022. Next Sunday will be the second. Saturday will be the first. Friday, I believe, is the 31st. And we shall be crossing the year over into 2022, Friday night. I want us to spend the next few days, next few days, exercising what I'm sharing with us. You have authority. Before you even go into 2022, I want you to know you can line things up because you have authority. In Matthew 28 and verse 18, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. The next verse, he says, therefore go. That is applying to each one of us. Therefore go. He said, all authority in heaven, on earth, and under the earth has been given to me. Therefore go. We need to reclaim this position of authority. And let me say that if you don't decree and command with authority, somebody else, somebody else will fill the, that vacuum. You know, somebody else will release authority. Something else will begin to take charge. God gave you dominion. And it's important that we take charge from the word go as we begin the new year. Command with authority. In Luke chapter 10 verse 19, Jesus says something very, very amazing. I have given you authority to trample on uh, scorpions and, uh, and on snakes and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. I want you to read with me. Let us read this verse together. If you are at home, I want us to read even here. Let us just read together. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 loud enough. Let's read it. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. I would like for us to make it personal now, first person. You say, I have been given authority. Let's say it together. I have been given authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. 
nothing will harm me. Let's give a hand to the Lord. That authority has been given. And so when you come to prayer, just do thanksgiving. Instead of praying, give me authority, come from a point of, thank you, Jesus, for giving me authority. And let me declare in 2022, nothing will come in your direction that is bigger than God. Did somebody hear me? In 20, from the first day to the last day of the year 2022, nothing will come before you that will be bigger than our God. God has given us authority. And with that understanding, you'll see the place where God has put you. In fact, in Ephesians, the Bible says, we are seated together with Christ in the heavenly realms. We are coheres, you know. We are kings and queens in the kingdom. We have mandate and we have authority. Whenever I think about uh, authority, Deacon Wairago, I think of a policeman who enforces the law by the roadside. And uh, a very ordinary person, very ordinary person, the only difference is that they have a crown and every child of God has a kingdom crown. You have a kingdom crown on your forehead. There is a kingdom crown. The only thing this policeman has is government authority. And the policeman stands on the side of the road and a big lorry is coming, scuttling, you know, coming downhill. And all this policeman does is lift up his hand like this and the driver applies the brakes. And the truck comes all the way up to where the policeman is. And uh, that is authority. That is authority. And God wants us, as children of God, to exercise this authority. So when you see things happening in your life, in your situation, exercise that authority. In fact, this evening, uh, this night, I'm going to be, uh, you know, meeting a family uh, online, on Zoom. And uh, we are going to be dealing with authorities, you know, breaking certain things in the spiritual realms. And some are in the U.S., others are in other places. And we shall be gathered on Zoom. And one of the things that has been brought is soil, sample soil from three places of origin. And uh, I have that soil. It has been brought from where they come from in Kenya. They have, somebody has brought the soil. And I'm going to be having anointing oil. And I'm going to be pouring that oil inside that soil. I will be speaking to their roots. Jeremiah 1.10 says, I have given you authority over nations and kingdoms to uproot, to uproot, to destroy, to overthrow, to plant, and to build. I want to say, as we enter the year 2022, I want us to know that God has given us authority, and this authority needs to be exercised like that policeman lifting his hand. In Joshua 10, verse 12 and 13, Joshua commanded the sun to stand still because there was a battle going on and they had not finished winning this battle. He commanded the sun and the moon. I'll just read. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of, of Israel, sun, stand still. He was talking to the sun over Gibeon, a new moon over the valley of Aijalon. And then in verse 13, so the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. As it is written in the book of Jasha, the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about uh, a full day, 24 hours, because there is Joshua exercising authority. What leads Joshua to exercise authority? Because he used to meditate on the word of God day and night. He understood the power, he understood the, the permission, and he understood the right that God had given to him. My prayer is that as we enter year 2022, you may have struggled with certain things in 2021. I want you to know, reclaim your space of authority. Nothing is going to be bigger or can be bigger than God in the year 2022 and even now as we finish the year 2021. And therefore, prepare a destiny charge. You know, command with authority, prepare a destiny charge. You know, Elisha released a destiny charge on this woman. And he did it with confidence. And he said, this time, time like this, next year, you're going to be holding a sun in your hands. Is somebody picking something and exercising authority? 
May I say right now, a time like this next year, you will be well resourced financially in the name of Jesus Christ. Is somebody receiving that? A time like this next year, even way before, God is coming through. Because you know he is the source. We need to learn how to prepare a destiny charge. It is a statement of authority. And uh, you look at next year, and you say, by much next year, I decree, I declare, and you fill the blank. You say, by April next year, you are not a victim, you are a victor, you are an overcomer, and God is waiting for someone he can work with, somebody he can cooperate with. You can change nations, you can change villages, you can change families. It is possible. The children, young people who are here, if you have a father who drinks alcohol and you've been worrying about your father getting drunk, can you prepare a destiny charge for your father? And say, <laughs> as we cross into the new year, my father will stop drinking in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a destiny charge. You can even write it on a small paper and you're really putting it up to God and say a demand note. And you're saying, God, this is my destiny charge regarding my father, regarding my mother, regarding my neighborhood. Command with authority. And you know, believers have walked away from the place of authority. And therefore, somebody else has entered that space. And the enemy begins to run route around you and exercising that authority over your life while you should be standing tall and saying, no way, like Joshua, and you command the sun to stand still. You are able to speak to seasons. In, in, in James chapter 5, verse 17, James chapter 5, verse 17, Elijah said it should not rain, I think for three and a half years. Is that so, Brother John? I think it was, yes. Let me just read. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Then he went on. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. Can you see, see the amount of authority God has given us? But secondly, command with specificity. Okay, it's a tongue twister. Command with specificity. I want us to try and say that word, specificity. Oh, you're doing very well. Let's say it again. <laughs> specificity. Right, thank you. Command with specificity. In other words, let your destiny statement be with clarity. Destiny clarity. Be very, very specific. When you're commanding your year, be very, very specific. Just like Elisha to the Shunammite woman. He said, a time like this next year, you'll be holding a baby. And you know, when you command with specificity, that is when you are able to know when God has acted. And you have specific thanksgiving. Because God will do specific things in your life, and you'll be able to come to the Lord with a thanksgiving in a very, very specific way. Let me remind us as we go to the year 2022, that January, February, March, all the way to December, there is something God's economy wants to do specifically on planet Earth. But God is waiting for a prayer person like Elijah who will come very, very specifically like Elisha and begin to say this specific thing, that specific thing, and the other specific thing. God is waiting for the prayer of his people, for the decrees and declarations and commands of his people, and he's waiting for people who are specific. I encourage you between now and Friday, begin to write down certain specific things. And don't be shy of writing big things. Let me tell you, when Elisha talked about a son being born to the Shunammite woman, it was not a small thing. That family never had a child. Today we have dedicated a baby. That time in that family, they, they never had a, a child. The Shunammite woman, the husband was now old. They couldn't get a baby. Thank God they hosted a prophet, you know. And you know scripture is very prophetic. The word of God is very forward-looking. 
In fact, as you foretell, you prophesy. Because the word of God is about the days ahead. And God has spoken very clearly. And you know, when this prophet spoke, he was not ambiguous. And a child is not a small thing. God is the giver. And this prophet spoke with a lot of confident, confidence and he decreed. You are going to have a baby. The baby came, as, as we read. And that family held a baby. They had a real testimony in real time. May I prophesy and decree and also declare that God will do real things, wonderful things in your lives in the year 2022. And what God is going to do, hallelujah, is something only God can do. As you enter 2022, go with this assurance and this confidence that God is going to line up certain beautiful things in your life. Some of them will come very early. And uh, as a pastor, then I would say, next year, God is coming through. Some people are looking at next year. I went somewhere to lead in some prayers among some business people. And they told me, you know, there are, we shall have elections. We don't know how it's going to look like. You know, they were looking very afraid. I told them, fear not. Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not, for God is with you. He'll strengthen you. And Dr. Kappa, you know that verse. He'll uphold you with my, his victorious right hand. And we sang about the hand of God. Uh, John, when you were here, you prayed about the hand of God, the theme of your prayer, which was the hand of God. And I told them, with God's hand in, in our midst, it doesn't matter election or no election. God's breakthroughs are not going to be stopped by elections in Jesus' name. God of breakthrough. Is, is, is coming through with specificity and begin to write down, specify. Anybody wants to get a baby, our God is able to, get, to give you a baby. Hallelujah. May I prophesy you will get that baby. Somebody who has been waiting for a baby for a long time. Are you listening? Are you receiving this now in the name of Jesus Christ? God is coming through for you. God is coming through for you. What is it that you desire from the Lord? Don't be shy. Be specific. Just be very clear before the Lord. And uh, when Ezekiel was put in the valley of dry bones, it looked like an impossible situation. But Ezekiel went there. He was given a specific word by God for this specific situation, the valley of dry bones. You know it from verse 4 of Ezekiel 37. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Imagine to these bones, the bones, whatever bones those are. You are coming from 2020, uh, 2021 with dry bones. You feel like that's all you got towards the end of the year. God has a specific word and a specific miracle for dry bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons uh, to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and uh, you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Listen to verse 7. Then he simply did what the Lord put in his heart. He just spoke. He commanded. He, I, I, as I, I prophesied, as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise. And even now, as I'm speaking from here, God is beginning to put something together for you in the name of Jesus Christ. A rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Is somebody coming into the, to the end of 2021 with only ashes, devastation, everything lost? You feel like your life can never come together again? I say that life is coming together again. There will be a testimony people will look at and say, only the Lord is, did this because man could not have done it. And the prophet was put in the valley of dry bones and he was told, just simply speak to these bones. And as he started to speak to them, this was commanding them. They started coming together and very quickly those bones were together. Destiny, clarity. God will do something that is real, is physical, manifest. Nobody will be able to miss it. And I'm prophesying here. What God is going to do is big, is good, is going to be manifest, is going to be real. And no one will miss it. 
people will actually see it. Your neighbors will look and they say, well, these are dry bones. Now look, it's a whole skeleton. Uh, flesh has come. Breath has come in. And suddenly that which was dead has come up back to life. Command with specificity. May I decree Psalm 23 verse 6 for you in the year 2022. Uh, the surely goodness and mercy shall do what? Shall follow you all the days of 2022. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord throughout 2022. That's very specific. And so you will be pursued by goodness and also pursued by uh, by mercy and we sang that song a little earlier and that is your portion that is my portion that is the portion of my children in Jesus name and I believe you're also saying is a portion of your children and children grandchildren those who have grandchildren in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ command with specificity don't just beat the bush if it's somebody who needs to to be healed be like Peter and John Acts 3 verse 6 where they say it's silver and gold have we None, but that which I have, I give to you. In the, in the name of Jesus, do what? Walk. Be very specific. Give that command. Give that instruction. What is it that you want God to do for you? But finally, of course, command with expectation. This is how to command your year. Command with expectation. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Hebrews 11 verse 1. The conviction of things not seen. This is called destiny conviction. I would like for us to walk into 2022 with a conviction that God is for real coming through. Command with expectation. Let me repeat Hebrews 11.1 1 once again. Now faith is a confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. God wants us to be assured. God wants us to be confident and God wants us to enter year 2022 with destiny conviction. If you are here and you're giving up on life, listen to this preacher speaking to you and saying, this is not the hour to give up. This is the hour to arise and shine. This is the hour to receive your feet again. This is the hour to be strong again. God still has so much to do with your life. And God's purpose for your life is not finished. May you be strengthened now in the name of Jesus Christ. And may you receive hope again where you have lost hope. God is about to do something new and fresh in and through your life. Next Sunday, we shall be delving deeper in the message of the new year. Even, even as we look at, uh, you know, the new beginning God is giving us uh, next, next Sunday. But even now, for that person who may have reached the place of giving up, I want you to know, forget, for, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, God is doing a new thing. Don't you perceive it? Now it springs up. I want you to open your eyes of faith and begin to connect with that vision again, with that dream again, with that project you started once again. Begin to see the completion. Begin to see the hand of God. Begin to see uh, with the eyes of faith and develop destiny conviction. Matthew 17 verse 20 says, um, uh, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain be move from here to there. And the Bible says, if you say that to that mountain, that mountain will be moved. Our God is able. Hallelujah. Matthew 19 verse 26 says, with God all things are possible. Nothing will be impossible for you if you have faith the size of a mustard seed. Have this conviction that God is coming through. Just something inside yourself saying, despite my situation, uh, despite what I may be seeing or going through right now, my God is coming through. You are not a child of a lesser God. God has not forgotten you. Our God, whom I serve, is saying to you now that I have not forgotten you that I have a miracle for you, that you can enter the year 2022 with faith, conviction, and with confidence, because I am your God. Let me remind us that when you lift up your eyes, lift them up to God, not to any human being. 
Simply look up to God as you go into this year. And you'll be surprised what you will see. Our God is just amazing. His name is El Shaddai. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is God, our healer. He has everything you need. He has everything you ever needed. Are you here and you are jobless? May I declare your job in Jesus' name? Is somebody receiving that? I decree and declare today your job in the name of Jesus. And I'm not just decreeing and declaring any job. I am declaring a good job, a well-paying job. And some of us, I'm decreeing you're going to be an employer. Hallelujah. You're going to start businesses. And you're going to start, in the year 2022, companies. And they're going to thrive. And many people will lean on you. Somebody is saying, Pastor, are you talking about me? You don't know what I've gone through this year. I am saying, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Many people will lean on you. And you will be a blessing to many nations like Abraham. You may not feel it right now, but I want your eyes of faith to open up. I want you to have destiny conviction. Because we have a God who is in charge of destiny and he never fails. He has never been defeated. You know, God never gives up and God knows you by name. And so Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. For whoever knocks the door shall be open. Whoever seeks, uh, knocks the door shall be open. Whoever seeks shall find. You know, and uh, whoever does what else? <laughs> Asks shall receive. I think that's the one I was, I was leaving out. The A-S-K of prayer. A-S-K. Ask, seek, and knock. So the word ask, whether you read it this way or you read it that way, it is ask. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. As you enter the year 2022, God has opened his arms like this and he's saying, look up to me, not to a man. Be bold in your prayer. Just simply begin to ask that which you have desired. And God is saying, I am taking over and I will give you that breakthrough. The child we just dedicated is a miracle. And I know this is a praying family. God has blessed you with a baby, Lavinia. Is that a big miracle this, this year? God is faithful. And I have said, God is able to do that kind of thing over and over again. This is the time for us to command our year. Use this day all the way to Friday. These are great principles here to command your year. Don't just walk into 2022 like everybody else walks in there and uh, the devil is left to run helter-skelter in terms of your year this coming year. Use the next five days up to Friday to take authority, take again authority where authority has been lost. And I say, in Jesus' name, I take authority. But second, specificity. Be very, very specific. Begin to, line, to write things. By the way, what I'm uh, sharing with us, I've told my children, we are doing it, and we are going to meet as we cross over the year with my children. We are going to have Holy Communion the Passover feast, we shall have it with my children, the crossover Lord's table, and then we shall have all these papers and we shall come with them. And uh, I have taught my children to trust God specifically, you know, for, for great things. But you know, as you do that also, do it with expectation, knowing that God is going to do that which we trust him for. Because the scripture teaches us that his promises are for us. Therefore, this next five days, prepare for year 2022. We've just had Christmas. Now we are focusing on the new year, and the best way to prepare is spiritually. Become like Elisha. Enter a homestead and decree things. Declare, declare things. Go to a business. Linda, you know? Yeah? Go to any business and begin to declare things inside there and to decrease. Some people become afraid, you know, of declarations because they think uh, they're talking about it's God. When you declare by faith, it's God who is actually uh, promising to keep that declaration. Go back home this week. Those things that have not worked the whole year, 2021, begin to reverse 
um, those locks, to break those chains. Just go there and declare and decree. The church is called to use its, its declaration and decree powers. But we have walked out of that space. Another has occupied that vacuum. But we can take authority once again in the name of Jesus Christ and reclaim that place of victory. I believe by the time we are crossing over and this year, the ones who are listening to me and the ones who will listen even later, we shall be well prepared to be able to take 2022 by storm and prepare to enter a year where God reigns and where God rules. And I know Pastor Ambrose will be coming uh, later on to continue uh, when he comes to give the theme of this coming year. But I'm looking forward to a great year 2022. Next Sunday, we'll be here. I'll be praying very, very special prayers to commission us into the year 2022. But for now, it is now taking authority, commanding specifically, but also with conviction and, and faith and expectation. I want to lead us in a prayer today. And as I lead us in this prayer, it's a preparation for the year 2022. I want you to connect with someone, your family, maybe something you intend to do in the coming year. Uh, just connect with something as we trust God together. My God is big. And just like Elisha said, this time, next year, you'll be holding a baby in your hands. I declare next year, real things, tangible things, manifest things, beautiful things are coming in your direction. Things no one will be able to mistake. People will see it. Hallelujah. People will see those things that God is about, is going to do. Some of you will lay hands on the sick and they'll, and they'll be well. You'll just share a word, somebody will get saved. I see revival coming. Hallelujah. We have a mighty God. That gift, that talent, surrender it to the Lord as we go into 2022. I'll ask us now to stand up. We pray together. Hallelujah. We have authority. We can command specifically. And uh, we, we can have conviction based on faith and be expectant to receive from the Lord directly. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for this word you've given me for this Sunday. And God, I pray that you use it as a preparation to raise an army that will walk into 2022 and through the year 2022 with a difference, bringing victory everywhere they go. That Lord, you will raise an army as we go into 2022 who are like prophet Elisha, who go into a homestead that has never had a baby and then do a declaration and a decree using authority, being specific, and also expectant and change the dynamics of a family. My God, I'm praying that an army is raised that will make that kind of difference that Elisha made in the home of the Shunammite woman. And my God, as we do this last Sunday of 2021, I am praying for this kind of anointing that gives uh, uh, people courage and boldness to be able to exercise authority and not to allow the devil to have an upper hand. Because God, you said you've given us authority and power over scorpions and over snakes and nothing will be able to overcome us. Lord, I pray, give us that kind of courage and that kind of boldness because there are so many issues in our families and our personal lives that God still need to be sorted out. But also praying today that God, you will lead us to clarify things before you, our vision, our dream, our desire. Because you say in Psalm 37, 4, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Lead us to a place where we can be clear when we come into your presence. And even as we speak, we speak with clarity, giving commands. But finally, Lord, my prayer is that we shall be expectant and we shall go with hope and strength, knowing that, God, you are coming through. I have shared this word with us, and I am praying that God raises Elisha's, people who will walk with this kind of courage. If you are trusting God, 
to be able to refresh your authority your specificity but also your expectation and to be able to speak like Elisha into 2022 and through the whole year if you're trusting God for this would you lift your hand to God father I want to thank you for these hands that have come up these hands are hands of ordinary people just like Elijah was an ordinary person and he prayed that there would be no rain for three and a half years and there was no rain and then he prayed that there would be rain and there was rain Joshua was also an ordinary man who raised his hand and, and prayed that the sun would st stand still and the moon would also stand still and the sun and the moon stood still and obeyed an ordinary man Lord you can see these hands lifted up to you my God I pray that authority is released fresh authority is released into the life of everyone whose hands are up both in the home and also online and here authority according to scripture and that God in the year 2022 this authority will be exercised that God you'll give us boldness in asking that nothing will be too big when we come to you my God and begin to decree and command that God we shall ask for big things but finally as we lift our hands to you that you renew our faith my God I pray there's somebody who came and also following online who had reached a place the end of their road and they were carrying ashes that today their hope will be lifted afresh and with the authority I have in union with Jesus God will turn, you will turn those ashes into crowns of glory. That God, you will do a miracle in their life. That God, you will begin something new and even something fresh. My God, come through for us. And I prophesy again, as we enter 2022, even before it's gone too far, God is coming through. Receive what God is saying now. Receive this word that is prophetic. And God is saying, I am coming through. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, next year, fully covered by a prophetic decree, like Elisha prophesied. This time next year, and even much earlier, God is coming in a real way, in a beautiful way. He's going to do something big that the whole world will see. And no one will be able to deny it. And that is your miracle. And I have prayed this prayer in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we all say, we all say, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want us to give another hand clap, a big hand clap to our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Are we ready for 2022? Are we ready for what God is about to do in 2022? May God come through for us. Hallelujah. We say it, Merry Christmas and a blessed 2022. Maybe you turn to the person next to you somehow and tell them uh, Christmas season to you and also a blessed 2022. Hallelujah. Yes, those words are important as we bless one another so that God gives us a blessed, wonderful 2022. Amen. We serve a mighty God. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.